and welcome back to Sunrise Serials. I'm your host, Richard Pochard, and today we continue with the Dead End Kids in their first serial, Junior G-Men. So, what exactly is a Dead End Kid? I'm glad you asked. In 1935, Pulitzer Prize winner Sidney Kingsley's new play, Dead End, opened on Broadway. It told a story about juvenile delinquents growing up on the streets of New York. The cast featured 14 boys playing members of two rival gangs and ran for two years. Samuel Goldwyn and director William Wyler saw the play and bought the film rights to it. They tried casting it in L.A., but Goldwyn felt the boys who auditioned lacked the emotional depth needed for the production. So he hired six boys from the original cast, the play had just closed at this point, and gave them two-year contracts to fly to Hollywood and star in the movie. They were listed in the opening credits as The Dead End Kids. Billy Halep, Bobby Jordan, Hans Hall, Bernard Punsley, Gabriel Dell, and Leo Gorsi. Goldwyn had hoped to use the boys in several films, but they ran riot on the studio lot, engaging in destructive hijinks, including throwing firecrackers into Humphrey Bogart's dressing room and crashing a truck into the wall of a soundstage. By the time the film was released, Goldwyn and United Artists had had enough of the boys and sold their contracts to Warner Brothers. Obviously, their story doesn't end there, but now it's time to turn our attention to another story. Chapter 3, Human Dynamite. Yeah, let's blow this joint. Look at that, though. Will it be before it blows up? Yeah, sure. What do you want me to do with it? Drink it? Uh, tell Corey okay. Let's get over by that scrubby just in case Martin's pulled a fast one. Now, when I come over, it won't blow up. at the vault house vault again. Why isn't it locked? Captain Seven said it's okay, Corey. It's all set. Oh. 
Sorry, didn't know my own strength. Sergeant Double crossed us. He gave me his word the explosion would crack the steel block, but wouldn't wreck the building. He meant that Joe to kill us all, a dirty crook. What happened? Get back to the gate and stand guard. Yes, sir. to kill us all. You're mistaken, sir. I was just as anxious for the experiment to be a success as you were. But I warned you repeatedly not to have any explosive matter within 300 feet. There was no other... As I told you, there was a bottle of high explosive in the garage, considerably more than 300 feet away. Is it there now? Well, of course it's there. Where would it be? The garage is lost. here if it's there. Why, well, I tell you, I... This was a trick of yours, Barton. You'll pay the extreme penalty. If it was, I would say abracadabra. Of one of your own followers. On a par with your whole stupid scheme. Don't try my patience too far. I assure you, sir, when I do try one of my tricks, it'll be a thorough job. Ever been solved in half before? I'm just Quite perfecting that one. The experiment under any conditions you may consider safe. The explosive is gone, and the garage door was locked. Evidently, you have a traitor in your own outfit. Silence! Landscapers have really let this front yard go to hell. Hey, come this way. There's a door over there. Come on. Politicians to be the Michelin Man. Is he talking with his mouth full again? Field block that was ordered. We'll repeat the experiment tomorrow. Meanwhile, you'll stay in this room under guard until we find out who tampered with the explosive. The rest of you come to my office. Corey, you stay here.
guess I gotta draw the trouble when we come here. Yeah, maybe he's gonna drive us back. Not if you don't tip him this time. No, sir, I haven't been in the garage today, and I don't touch anything around here without orders. But someone in this organization is responsible. With our electrified walls, this place is invulnerable. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Talk more slowly. I can't understand you. Well, I hope he's heading back home. Yeah? What are we going to do when he opens the doors? Jump him, of course. What do you think? Then you can hit him with this. Yeah? I'll be sending up a mortar. That's all right, sir. All right. Guard says two boys are inside the walls. Two boys. Something can't about a lost the baseball. They can't go over the walls and go out and search those grounds. No, Severin. That explains the explosion of the vault house. Someone in league with Barton took the explosives out of the garage. Yes. What's that? Well, haven't repaired it once. They have those walls watched. Explosions damage the protective wiring. It's out of commission. Then they may have escaped over the wall. I can't go far. I'll have the roads patrolled. Uh, all I could get now was some crazy guy named Dr. Zarkov. Yes, Mr. Bradford. You think the Colonel is held prisoner by the order of the Flaming Torch? We don't. We know. Harry feels that he can pick up another message. What's this? A knock at the door. What did you think oh, it was? Come on in. Glad to have you lift the place over. You come over to join up with us? We ain't joining up with no one. We're sticking with Billy Barton. That's okay by us. What can we do for you? Billy and Jeff disappeared. Disappeared? When? Yeah, we spotted two of the torches in the car. You know, the guys that jumped us at the FBI office. So where'd you see them? Well, they parked that car down. If we knew the that, street. you wouldn't be so disappeared. Then we thought we'd watch them. But when I went to get these two guys and came back, they both were gone. This is going to be the best game of hide-and-seek ever! Those boys were inside the walls when the explosion damaged that electrified wiring. Now how'd they get in? The panel truck. It's the only thing that's come through the gates today. If they stowed away in it while Foster was it. That's it. They were taken right into the garage. And that would account for their getting hold of the explosive, too. I'll get Foster. Foster's gone back to town with the truck. Well, then get him by short way. Those boys might escape the same way. They may be inside the truck. Man, this new stereo system is way too complicated. Careful what you say. You mustn't open that truck. Just tell him to come back here. And so we thought maybe you guys would help us out. Well, they probably followed the car. No, they wouldn't do that, because Billy said one of the guys would be there to meet us. Headquarters calling Foster. Hey, Harry, you have the police calls. Not this way, Link. Headquarters calling Foster. Headquarters calling Foster. Foster reporting to headquarters. Come on in, Foster. I'm on Ballard Pike, about eight miles from the city. Hey, what's the idea of turning back? You have dangerous cargo. Come back at once. Dust, dangerous cargo. How did those guys know we was here? The G-Man told us the torch can was plenty sharp. See how this is what we do? I'm trying to break that door open with this tire hammer. Well, what does it mean, Uncle Jim? That's probably the torch can. Keep on that wavelength. We're not sure the boy's in the truck. You better send out a general call to any of our cars that are on the road. You have a description of the boys. Attention all members. There it is again. Attention all members. Keep a lookout for two boys on Ballard Pike and the joining road. One boy, about 17, blonde, rather long hair. In those days, long hair meant anything more than a crew cut. Second boy. About the same age, dark complexion. And that's Billy. Record that wavelength for communications department. Phone FBI and tell them to contact all available cars and put them on the ballot flight. Come on, dude.
I can't make it. Ah, don't make a project out of it, will you? You start it once in a while. Well, that's one way to get the door open. Come on, let's get out of here. What happened? That truck. It must have hit this one. It's on fire. Come on. Wait a minute. That's the same place they ran through before. Just how big is that front yard? Imagination. Hey, he's going away. We might take a look. We better wait here he gets farther away. Yeah, we better get somewhere and call the cops. What for? We couldn't tell nothing if we did. Technically, we don't even know where those crooks' hideout is. This is our fight, our mob against theirs. No cops gonna chisel on us. Come on, let's get out that way and some ride home. Go on. I can't even walk. Oh, you fucked up my my leg. Anyway. We're the day watch. Mind if we check the time? Okay, thanks. Go ahead. They're not the men we're after. No, no flaming torch on their wrist. All right, can't walk no further. Nobody's gonna pick us up anyway. They think we're a bunch of hobos. Here comes another car. Keep limping. For, boys. Oh, no way in particular. Give us a listen to town, will you? You look as though you'd been in a fight. Yeah, a couple of guys by it. Dope. That truck we was riding got run into. Okay, hop in. Thanks. Oh, this is pretty soft. Better than hoping. Flaming torch. Sit down. Don't move. Don't try to signal passing cars, or I'll give you such an Indian rope burn like you wouldn't believe. Hey, that fellow's coming fast. We got two kids in the car. Flag him down. G-Man's car, Jim Bradford.
noticed that serial chapter titles usually refer to the cliffhanger, but I have no idea what they meant by human dynamite. Explosive personalities? Anyway, let me know how I'm doing in the comments, and if you like today's show, give it a thumbs up. Hey, I can use the encouragement. Will the dead end kids be torched? Does FBI stand for foolishly bad instinct? Does JIP even have a driver's license? Come back tomorrow for Chapter 4, Blazing Danger. Hope to see you then. Hey everybody, it's Richard again, and if this is the first time you're viewing my series, you've already missed a lot, so why not subscribe, and that way you'll never miss another exciting cliffhanging moment. Subscribe today!